Hello everyone, please join my game here with a Retro Studio scripting tutorial. Here I'm going to explain to you how the scripting system in Retro Studio, or more simply called block scripting works, and a couple of other things you might need to know to get acquainted with it, like what the five current categories contain and how variables work. However, before I begin, you need to know that I am not here to teach you how to script in general. So if you don't know how to script in Roblox, you'll have a harder time understanding anything here. If that's the case, then under the description, there's a couple of videos that I think will be useful for beginners like you to start with. In case you already know how, let's start this tutorial. Remember to pause and rewatch if you need to. So block scripting, in short, is a visual form of coding where you click and drag blocks to create a chain of blocks that connects to each other to make a functioning script with it, which is kind of like Unreal Engine's visual scripting or Blender's material nodes. So to start things off, let me introduce to you how to connect blocks. In this script, I will put two print blocks. One prints red and the other prints blue. Also keep in mind that I'm going to call these print blocks with the words they print out to be quicker. Anyways, let's get back on track. Now, if red is connected to blue, then the script will first execute the unconnect block that isn't an event or input block, which is the block that prints out red. And then the red will now execute the block that is connected to it, which is blue. Now let's add a third print block that prints out green. If a block is connected to more than one block, then the connections will be ran from left to right. So let's say green is first connected to the blue one, and then the red one. The script will first print green, which is the unconnected block, and then moves on to the first connected block, which is blue. And until every block connected to that one is executed, it will move on to the second one, which is red, and it will run everything there. And so on if there's more blocks connected to it. You can also connect blocks in one chain to another one. Like if green is connected to blue and red, but blue is also connected to red, it will make the script print out red twice. That being said, be very aware of situations where blocks are connected to each other in a different chain. This could create a daisy chain that would and will crash your game. We're basically done with the block connections, now let's move on to the categories. Right now there's 5 categories on the left, which contains a block that has a distinct purpose that fits the category. I'm not going to explain what every block here does, but you can still right click on the blocks to get more info from them. The most simple category here is map blocks, which contains blocks that perform arithmetic on numbers like vector phrase and variables with number values. It does math. Okay, let's move on to action blocks, which they contain blocks that does an action that is stated on the block's names. Next are input and event blocks, which function similarly, in which they require some sort of input or event to happen in order for it to execute the blocks that it connects to. Until then, the blocks connected to them uh, remains unran. And, uh, and finally, miscellaneous blocks, which has commands that does specific unique actions, which doesn't really fit in the other four categories. Finally, let's move on to block outputs, or I suppose variables. In a few dozen blocks, there are probably extra text boxes under the word outputs. Here will be where the variables are going to be set and stored. I'm going to use get object property for an example. Let's say I want to get the color of the brick the script is in, so I'm going to get brick color property of script that parent. Uh, you can also click this little part icon here for Retro Studio to type out a pathway for you. However, this can only extend free parents before it shortens itself to the game, so sometimes it's better to just type out the path yourself. I will now put a word into the outputs, and that will be the variable of this block. It will be that way until another block overwrites it by having the same variable. Now, it's time to put this variable to use another block. You may notice the use variable box. If you take this box, then whatever you put in the box above it will be taken as a variable. Oh, and also you can still use variables from blocks that are not in the same chain. Moving on, let's insert another block called set object property. This one I wanted to change the color of the base flake to the brick color variable we just got from the get object property block. So take this variable box and put our variable we just got before and I'm gonna put a weight in a print block that prints the variable so it becomes more apparent when we play test. Now, let's see if this is true or rubbish. As you can see, it prints the color of the brick in the output, and now after five seconds, it will change the color of the base plate to that color. And so that wraps up about the bare minimum, I think. 
If you still have a question, leave it in the comments and I'll probably take 50 weeks to respond or join and ask other people in the Retro Devs Discord server which is in the description. I really recommend joining it since asking for help in the server is actually quite useful in learning block scripting. Just make sure you're asking in the Retro Studio chat. That's about it. Peace.